Good old Aristotle, the man who taught us that the virtue is the golden mean between two extremes, can actually teach us something very important about fitness and how to attain the ideal physique. My friends, even though he had skinny legs, we can draw upon the perennial wisdom of Aristotle to help us become what I call lean jacked. And lean jacked is that golden mean between the extremes of being skinny fat, which nobody wants, but also being fat jacked, which some people want, but I think you would much more prefer to be lean jacked, a hard, chiseled physique where you look good with your clothes on and your clothes off. To become lean jacked is indeed, I think, the ultimate fitness goal in terms of aesthetics, but it can also be really useful in terms of performance as well, especially relative strength to body weight ratio. Not only that, but if you shoot to become lean jacked, it forces you to optimize both your training and nutrition. Becoming lean jacked is difficult. You can't be sloppy. You have to think hard and you have to think well about how you are lifting and how you are eating. So let's dive in. In this video, I want to explain the principles of training and eating for the outcome of becoming lean jacked. This will be quick, this will be simple, but I promise you, if you adhere to these principles, and you can fill in the specifics however you want, but if you adhere to the principles, the outcomes will indeed be rather marvelous. So let's start on the training side. If you wanna become lean jacked, how should you train? Well, what I want you to think about is a pyramid or a triangle. And you might think back to the old food pyramid, what a disaster that was, but it's a good little framework to think about how to order things in terms of importance and quantity. So when it comes to training, I like to think about the fitness minimalist lean jacked training pyramid. That's way too long of a name, but we're just going to stick with it because I'm not editing this video. And at the bottom of the pyramid is the stuff that we should do the most of, and that's walking and mobility work. I want you to try to walk every single day. Sometimes you hear that you should shoot 10,000 steps a day, shoot for 10,000 steps a day. That's great. That's fine. I don't think that's a bad recommendation. Just walk a lot. That low level cardio activity not only keeps you happy and healthy, but it will help you to facilitate uh, fat loss and stay lean as well. Then in the middle of the pyramid, Something that you want to do around three to four days per week is you want to train the strength and muscle building efforts, the heavy resistance training. Here I'm talking about taking the big lifts, push, pull, hinge, squat, carry, maybe some direct core work and perform them for somewhere between three to four sets, eight to 12 reps, taking those sets very close to technical failure. So you gotta go heavy with it. You have to lift serious weight across the big lifts three to four days per week, three to four-ish sets, eight to 12 reps, you can't go wrong with that. So you might pick front squat, you might pick military press, you might pick deadlift, you might pick bent over row, and you might pick hanging leg lift. If you just went with those five exercises, put them into that framework, you are going to build some very good quality, functional muscle, my friends, I guarantee you. Then at the top of the pyramid, we have the bourbon to the sauce of the lean jacked training program. And this would be your metabolic conditioning. This is the stuff that makes you sweaty, you're really out of breath, you love to hate it, it's miserable, but it's awesome at the same time. My favorite approach to metabolic conditioning would be to use high intensity kettlebell complexes. Think stuff like my Great Destroyer workout, my nine minute workout where you're performing multiple exercises back to back with little to no rest in between. You're keeping the system working as a whole as you're switching through uh, various muscle groups and energy systems. Awesome for creating that metabolic afterburn effect. Going to be really, really useful for again, just cranking the metabolism and facilitating greater overall fat loss. Okay, so that is your training approach to become lean jacked. But that is going to be not totally effective unless you also have a sound approach to nutrition. And, and really, you know, the saying that, hey, abs are made in the gym, but they're revealed in the kitchen is definitely true. If you don't pay attention to what I'm going to say right now about the nutrition side, you will not be lean jacked. In fact, if you, if you just do the training and you eat like a hog, you'll probably become fat jacked, <laughs> right? Whereas if you just do the nutrition, but you don't do the training, you might become skinny fat. So they really need to go together. It's not an either or, it's a both and you need the training and you need the nutrition if you wanna be lean jacked, baby. So here we go. Very simple. The first thing you're gonna focus on when it comes to the eating side is a calorie cycle. Now a calorie cycle includes a calorie deficit. We know that this is the sort of master control when it comes to weight loss outcomes. You need to achieve a calorie deficit at least you know, in the general run or across a general trend. Calorie cycling is really effective because it will allow you to achieve a deficit overall while just kind of breaking up the intensity and the monotony of dieting. It makes it more sustainable, helps prevent metabolic downshifting, all that good stuff. Five days per week, I want you to shoot for a 10 to 20% calorie deficit. So you calculate your maintenance and then try to land 10 to 20% below your maintenance for five days per week consecutively. And then on the weekend, two days per week, just bring your calories back up to maintenance. You might even wanna have 
you know, some higher carbohydrate consumption. That provides a nice psychological and physiological break. Will help you to retain more lean muscle and recover better from your workout. So the calorie cycle, I think, is really uh, your best weapon, if you will, to facilitate fat loss while also making sure that, that you become lean jacked, right? That you can recover from, from training, that you can perform well, and you don't just completely burn out from dieting, which is tough, no doubt. After that, next most important thing is a protein target. I've talked about this in many other videos. You can go watch my Fight Club video if you want more details on this. General rule, whatever you want to weigh, eat that in grams of protein per day. You're probably tired of me saying this, but I'm just going to keep repeating it until you finally do it because, look, perennial truths don't change. We're going back to Aristotle. Right? The stuff he said is largely still true. Well, he probably said the same thing about protein. Right? Eat protein, magic happens. If you want to weigh 150 pounds, try to get somewhere around 150 grams of protein, preferably from quality lean protein sources, chicken, eggs, uh, turkey, salmon, uh, uh, bear, moose, elk, pigeon, I don't care, Whatever's, whatever you're into. All right? Then finally, what I also recommend as a sort of additional tool to help, this is well uh, researched, it's optional but recommended is the use of strategic meal replacements and the idea is just work some protein shakes into your diet. Why? Protein shakes help to control satiety. They help you to hit your protein targets. It's a good way to get in some quality nutrition. You're throwing some healthy uh, fruits and vegetables and healthy fats, almond butter, avocado, and it's convenient. So when it comes to getting things done and doing a good job, uh, you know, there's a lot of different factors that influence fitness outcomes. And we can't ignore the factors that relate to stress and convenience and lifestyle. So if we can make nutrition more convenient, if we don't have to worry about a whole bunch of just really tedious meal prep, if we can just use some simple tools like you know an occasional protein shake, maybe that's what we have for the first meal of the day, just swapping a meal every now and then with a protein shake is a good way to fight against those cravings, to, to blunt hunger, to get in an adequate amount of protein and other you know important micronutrients as well. So let me, again, emphasize that being lean jacked requires that you dial in a lot of things. But here's the cool, here's the cool thing, right? If you can do this, if you can become truly lean jacked, you can do pretty much anything, right? Uh, because it requires you to really own both the training and the nutrition side. So even if you want to kind of bulk up later or just totally lean down at another uh, point in your training career or fitness, everyone talks about the journey, the great fitness, everything's a journey, right? Uh, just focusing on at least a phase of trying to become genuinely lean jacked, avoiding the extremes of skinny fat and fat jacked, it will teach you a lot about how to be efficient and how to optimize your training and nutrition principles. I'm Pat Flynn, strong on.